BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 117, Treating Erectile Dysfunction. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So we're continuing our conversation about ED, and ED is erectile dysfunction in men. And uh, generally, in their lifetime, all men go through cycles where they have concerns about their erection, either their ability to get an erection or their ability to maintain what to them is a satisfying erection. Mm -hmm. And because it's such a common problem, the general standard is that if it's happening to you uh, 25% of the time or more, then you mm -hmm. should speak to a physician about it and, and have it investigated. And they'll interview and they ask you questions about lifestyle and health and medicine and blood pressure and stress and all kinds of things. And then there are things that can be done. Uh, one of the things you probably know or should know is that the typical male has three to five erections per night that last up to 30 minutes. Now that doesn't mean you may know you have them. Right. You, you may and not because you're asleep. I'm not sure how they did that study. Well, but. <laughs> I'm not either. What the research says is uh, if you're not sure about whether you do that or not, talk to your physician and they will help you learn what you need but to know you, to figure it out. If you're having an erect, erection in the morning, which is what mm -hmm. most men do, yes. then you're okay. Yeah. In general, that means you're, you're functional. Yeah, and, and so then if it's not happening for a sexual encounter, the suggestion is there's some other causative agent. That it's, it's not, not just usually, your body not working. Yeah, it's not, so it it's may not be physical, usually. Relational, it may be stress, it may be performance anxiety, it may be some other kinds of things. Uh, but if those things are eliminated and just the mechanics of the system are not working, Mm -hmm. then there are things that can be done uh, that include the use of medicines, things like Viagra and Cialis. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other medicines. So and, and other, other medicines, medicines that are like suppositories, which, which so, are... So let's, there's like five of those. Let, let's, right. let's, yeah, okay. You want, you want to talk about the medicines first? Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about the oral pills. Okay. Okay, so the or oral pills, the Viagra, the Cialis, the Levitra, mm -hmm. those are, they all have the same process. Yeah. They all dilate the blood vessels in the pelvis so and that's what you need to have an erection is dilated blood vessels to bring all the blood to the pelvis to make make an erection that's just what it requires mm -hmm. so if you have very small vessels because you have heart disease and atherosclerosis or because you have diabetes or because you have some other vascular problem being a smoker being a smoker usually ends up this way okay, that if we time. would just tell smokers that mm -hmm. I bet they would stop smoking to keep their erections the rest of their lives. But, you know, but that, that yeah. is one of the things that can cause the pelvis not to be able to take all that blood that goes to the pelvis and bring, bring it yeah. into, into the penis so they can get an erection. So, so that is one of the ways, that is the way that Viagra and Cialis and Levitra work. Now, mm -hmm. the issues with them are, it doesn't work for everybody if they have too much constriction or if they have diabetes, sometimes even those drugs don't work. But they also have some side effects. And one of the biggest side effects I hear from men is that they get this full feeling in their head. Yeah, headaches. And they, they get a headache, and they feel like their head's going to explode. Uh -huh. and, um, and sometimes lower back pain. And lower back pain. And so mm -hmm. those things are things that are usually intolerable to somebody who wants to have sex. I mean, it doesn't, when you have a headache, you don't feel like having sex. Yeah, it's hard to weed that out because it's an intrusive uh, distractor. Right. I mean, it just... It's like a phone ringing. You know, yeah. You, you, it'll mess up your concentration. Most women with a headache won't have sex either. And, and it's, well, it's, I've heard that for years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's uncomfortable, and there can be other side effect issues as well. I mean, it's a hassle. For some, if, if you have health complications, if you've got a blood pressure issue, uh -huh. then you need to talk to your doctor about taking these medicines. Because and you're already on blood pressure medicine. They are medicine, prescription medicines. And, and it drops your blood pressure even more. You can pass out. Mm-hmm. Uh, People have had heart attacks and strokes. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, you worry about that too. If you have those health issues, if you have had a stroke or a heart attack, then you may be afraid of having sex and you may legitimately be afraid of having them. I mean, that, right, that's part it, of what you consult with your physician you can be, about. You can be evaluated to yes, see if that's going to cause exactly. a problem or not. And most people... But you just don't go out on an internet website no. and order <laughs> these things from China no, and start no, taking no, them. No, God forbid. No, that's not how, how you do this. We're just talking about... 
what yeah. you should expect from your doctor and what the, your doctor will probably go through. You know, sometimes it's easier to go to your doctor when you know what to expect. Yes. And so this is like the first line therapy, of course, because it's easier than the rest of these therapies and it's it's more immediate. So those are drugs that typically people take to help them get an erection, but there's one that's somewhat atypical and it's, it's moving into another category of treatments and it is called Muse. Uh, Muse. It's alprostadil or prostaglandin E1. So it's a pro, it's a prostaglandin, so if you have asthma, you cannot take this. Okay. Anything with a with the prostaglandin, asthmatics cannot take because it puts them into status asthmaticus. It's a bad thing, can't breathe. So Muse <laughs> is something you have to be cleared for by your in that, physician. In that case, gasping and wheezing is not orgasmic. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like trying to stay alive, <laughs> yeah, staying alive. Yeah. Turning blue is a bad thing. So yeah. that's that's one of those things where you have to tell your doctor everything. Asthma does relate to ED, mm -hmm. only in that you can't take some of the drugs. You, you have to give them a complete history. So so Muse works in only 30 to 40 percent of the cases. Uh, so th three or four men out of ten have success with it. It costs 30 to 40 bucks a pop, and you and take it in one of two ways. In the penis. It's so a it's a it's like a, a tiny... piece of grain of rice sized pellet mm -hmm. that you drop down the opening in the head the urethra in the head of your penis and you give it a few minutes to take effect. Mm -hmm. And one of the side effects for it is a burning sensation that some men say is too painful then, even when they have the erection that mm -hmm. they want, it hurts too much to be able to have sex. So they end up, mm -hmm. you know, taking the shot, uh, or taking the chance. Uh, but mm -hmm. and, and then not not getting use out of it. Uh, the other thing, if you don't use the pellet that you put in your urethra, your urethra, if you can tolerate it, you can get little teeny tiny needles and you give yourself an injection of this drug in the base uh, or shaft of your penis. At the bit right where the penis meets the abdominal wall? Yes. And that is a huge hassle to get used to because you've got to go to your doctor. You've got to be shown how to give the shot. Yeah. They have to demonstrate it for you. And you have to have that shot and wait in the office. I get office. cold chills thinking about it. I know. I mean, I kind work. of yeah, get it's that. Yeah, a five to minute, ten minute lead time. Yeah, I'm not afraid of needles, but that kind of freaks me out a little. Yeah. Just for the person that's having to do this to themselves. But the people that get used to this yeah. love it. Yeah. It gives you a very, a very long and very hard erection. So they're, they're thrilled. If they can stand that, if they can do it, they are ecstatically happy. I don't. I usually send patients to urologists to get this done because they're more used to exactly where this should be given. They're mm -hmm. trained by the drug companies actually to do this and so I suggest it but then send them to urologists to get it done. Okay. To be trained. So those are the drugs that you can take uh, that can help you with erections. There are some other things that you can do to help you with erections as well. And, and one is a vacuum tube. Uh, you, you buy a, like a 12 or 14 inch plastic tube uh, that it looks like Austin Powers. Everybody saw Austin Powers. It's a joke on Austin Powers, but that's what it is. It basically is a suction that you put well, your penis Well, but the literature in. says go to your physician and get a prescription. They cost about $500. If you go to mm -hmm. a sex shop or buy something off mm -hmm. the internet, they're toys and they don't really work effectively. As, yeah, they don't work for uh, So this. if you're going to do that, uh, you will get an erection. But you, you put this tube over it and then you have a hand pump that you squeeze. Uh, and, and it'll suck blood into your penis, and then when you take the tube off, you have to take almost like a rubber band a tourniquet. and put it around the base of your shaft, which will force the blood to stay in there until you're finished. So you can keep an erection for whatever. And this, would, I mean, I can see how this, unless you're used to toys, mm -hmm. this would be a problematic thing for a relationship. Well, I mean, it just. <laughs> not only that, you got to carry your bag with you and get out your equipment and, I mean, you know, while your partner's mm, waiting, you know, and, and exactly if you're dating, sexy. it's. Impossible. Gonna really sort of inhibit the image that you want to present <laughs> as a studly kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> Swave and the boner, we yeah. used to say. Yeah. So, so that I mean, that's an option though, and that's something that's non-invasive because the other two are invasive. The other and two work. options are, and it works. Yes. The other two work, but they're mm -hmm. invasive. They require surgery. Well, actually, the shots and the uh, rice pellet that yeah. goes in in uh, your uh, urethra. Those, of all the different kinds of things that you can do, are the ones that most frequently cause the four-hour erection that they warn you about. That's true. Where you have to go to the emergency room and get an adrenaline shot in your penis. 
to mm -hmm. make it go away. It's easily treatable, but you got to go to the doctor's office to get it done. And, and not everybody painful. can have an adrenaline shot because if you have heart disease, then that makes your heart go really fast. It's not good for you. So yeah. it has to be very carefully given if you go to the ER with that problem. You mm -hmm. should tell the ER doctor that you have heart disease or high blood pressure. Make sure they know that before they figure out your dose right. of adrenaline. So, so if you work your way through the decision matrix, through these options, and find out which ones work for you, which ones don't, for you and for your partner, because some are going to be off-putting to your partner, and that's a factor that has to be considered as well. You, you, you sort of work your way through the decision tree, and there are more, I would say, severe options that still enable you to have sexual function and sexual capacity, but, but there are trade-offs. Uh, the, the next option that you could have is a surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. And they can insert a pump in, uh, in your penis that is, uh, has a self-contained reservoir of a saline solution and it has a button that's put in your scrotum under the skin. So it's not visible, nobody knows that you have it. Uh, no, I you mean, it's you totally push the button and it automatically fills uh, up. pumps from the reservoir and fills your penis and you stay erect until you're ready to not be erect. And I mean, it can't you, accidentally fill. Doesn't accidentally it's, it's fill. A, it's an obvious it's not painful. button that you uh, have to push. So. And, and then when you're ready, you push the button to release the fluid back into the reservoir, mm -hmm. and then the erection goes away. Mm -hmm. And the, the science on that is that it, uh, the, the feeling sensation, uh, the arousal feelings, the orgasms, all of those mm -hmm. things are normal. But mm -hmm. the tra so, so a lot of people like that idea and the privacy because it's not visible to anybody right. else. You don't have to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Uh, and it doesn't accidentally go off. And you have <laughs> yeah. to turn it off. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really means you will never again have a natural erection. And usually a doctor won't put that in um, if yes. you're able to have any kind of erection. Right. Generally, that's, that's just try only Try Increasing reserved. levels of, of intervention. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's a, a second surgical procedure uh, if you don't want or can't have the the pump with the reservoir there are two semi-rigid rods that they insert in the shaft of your penis uh, that mm -hmm. are somewhat offset and you have to manipulate them and get them to line up and then that mm -hmm. forces an erection mm -hmm. uh, for the purpose of a sexual encounter and then when you're finished you have to unmanipulate them and get them to, to disconnect, mm -hmm. but your your penis is generally semi-rigid because those two rods never shrink or collapse. Right, so it's uh, always like that. And and I, if I remember correctly from the literature, the pump with the reservoir, you you you, you lose a little bit of length, and I'm not sure yeah. why. Yeah, that has to do with the procedure itself. Okay, so, so those are trade-offs and concerns. Now, we haven't even discussed testosterone because really the first line, <laughs> first line of ED treatment is really to get your testosterone back to normal. Your total over 400 and your free yes. testosterone over 129. So that's the first line and that usually takes care of over half, maybe even more than that. Most of my patients regain their uh, erections, mm -hmm. don't have ED more than, you know, the normal percentage. Mm -hmm. And therefore the testosterone is the answer to bring all the blood flow to the pelvis. So usually that's the case. Now, people who've had ED a long time or have had low testosterone a long time often don't respond as easily. And people who have other medical illnesses, they are smokers, they have COPD, they don't have enough oxygen, they don't have Grossly enough- Grossly overweight. They ha they're on blood pressure medicine and they have to stay on it. All of those things impact their ability to have a good erection even though their testosterone's good. Yes. So I can do so much, but I can't do the rest. Right. And it's hard to go back and repair uh, or catch up. Mm -hmm. So if you're smoking now, you should stop right now because that's your future. <laughs> you don't well, want to have to use one of these things. And most of these things don't have anything to do with arousal and desire issues. Now the testosterone mm -hmm. does. Yeah, when testosterone your testosterone kind of goes away, you're not going to have the desire. You're not going to have the arousal because the chemicals that promote that in your brain, the oxytocin, mm -hmm. they're not there. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, you know, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Am I having a problem having an erection because I'm really having a problem having desire? Or do I have mm -hmm. desire, but I'm having problems having an mm -hmm. erection? And there are people that I see that have low testosterone. They say they still are functional, 
but they don't have the desire to function. I mean, it's very, it's very individual. Some people, some men have, you know, if they don't have testosterone, they don't have either. Right. And if, if they have testosterone, they have both. I mean, sometimes happily that works, right. but sometimes we aren't, I'm not that perfect about it because I can't counteract everything that's come before. And psychologically, even if you have all of your hormones and you're functional, if you have a psychological barrier stress, to sex. Stress, anxiety, depression, Criticism and relational of your partner, complications. Your partner criticizes you all the time. You're not going to have an erection. Women should just stop doing that because they're not going to have sex again if they keep criticizing their partner. It just doesn't work. So, I mean, it may work in some weird way, but it doesn't work in general. Yes. So that's part of it. it, it this is this is so important to men's self-esteem, and I see that when they don't want to talk about it, but this has taken away their self-confidence when they can't do this one very important thing, and I had no idea how important morning erections were. They are so important. When men don't have those, they feel like they're not a guy anymore. It's kind of like breasts and women. You know, we kind of really need you our breasts to feel feminine. You know it's going to be a good day if you wake up with your best friend. <laughs> And he's not talking about his wife. Okay. <laughs> but, and, and we can, you know, we can. We've I'm, known each other longer than I've known my wife. <laughs> uh, seriously, it is an issue for men. And, and that's what, is, what Kathy is saying. And, and that is a, a salient marker. If that's happening for you, then there are moderate adjustments that may be relational, they may be conversational, they may be stress, they may be diet, they may be medicine that can help you. If that's not happening, it's a more serious concern and that needs a more aggressive intervention. Mm -hmm. But it, depending on where in your life cycle that is happening, it may be that the simplest, most efficacious solution is to get your testosterone replaced. Right. And that helps so many other things. And it, it combats aging as well. And mm -hmm. you don't feel nearly as self-conscious. If, if you have your sex drive, if you have erections and you're not feeling old and achy mm -hmm. and having trouble like exercising and getting out there and doing things. I mean, testosterone is, a, is necessary for health. It's necessary for psychological health. And it's necessary for sexual health. So if that is the one stop shop for all of this, that's ideal. Then we go from there to ED drugs, to, to prostaglandins and shots, then to something more permanent if we don't succeed. But the first thing is testosterone. Well, and, and to loop back for a moment to a point you were making, if the wife or partner is being critical, that, is, that can be devastating, especially for sexual performance. And communication is such a central part of relationships as a whole, but also critically central to sexual relationships. And uh, it's, it's a conversation for another day. It's a therapy conversation. But when someone, not just a partner in a sexual encounter, but when someone with whom you're having an intense conversation says something hurtful or aggressive, and they justify that by saying, I just was being honest, or I just <laughs> need to be honest, uh, that's BS. That is an aggressive statement. There's an agenda that they have. I'm saying this to you as a clinician who's worked with these issues mm -hmm. a lot. And I really work with people not to ever say that, but to mm -hmm. get to the core of what their real message is and be mm -hmm. more direct because it is emasculating, it is emotionally eviscerating, and it is damaging. My most uh, least favorite is when women don't talk to their husbands about it. Yeah. But they're like over here talking, talking to loudly yeah. to their friend so that their husband can hear it. And he's just, you can see him just shrinking. It, you know, his, oh. his his whole face is falling and he's 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 embarrassed. Well, but also, he the, the, there is an agenda and it's not that she's just blowing off steam because she's on purpose doing it absolutely. in his it's presence. A message. And, and a common one that, that I've heard in years of therapy is when the wife says in the guy's hearing, I could have married Joe Schmo, and he's now the president of Xerox, and I could have had a yacht and traveled around <laughs> the world, and instead, I married Bill. You know, that's just devastating. If you have an issue with Bill, if you're unhappy about his uh, success in life, you know, deal with that directly. Don't do that stuff. It's that really damaging. That comparison stuff is just really awful. Yeah. And, and it really doesn't play because 
anybody else besides the people in that relationship go, yeah, right, like he was going to marry her? <laughs> I don't think so. So, I mean, you know, that's a dream. It's not a reality yeah. in general. Your narcissism so, is yeah, running rampant. Yeah, your narcissism, yeah. you need to have uh, some counseling yeah. done for your own self. And but, but those are conversations yeah. for another day. We'll have those. Uh, come back and see us next time. Yes. Thank, Thank you for you. listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.